well, here we go again. Now, I wonder what he's going to have to say. As if I didn't know. Criticized, he'll criticize, critical spirit. I never saw such a negative-minded fella anywhere in the country. And they got up there, and Samuel blocked their way and bowed before the king in kind of a mock salutation and said, Good morning. And Saul said, Well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, the glory to God, and thank you, Jesus, and bless God, O oh my soul, and hallelujah. Oh, the Lord's blessed us, Samuel. Oh, I'll tell you, in spite of all our lack of faith, the Lord has blessed us as we've renewed old friendships, and he's been such a blessing. Oh, I just can't tell you the manifold blessings of God as he's poured out one blessing upon another. How good he has been to us. How unworthy are we to serve him. Oh, blessed be his holy name forever and forever. Amen. Samuel the prophet snorted and said, City life sure done a lot for you, hadn't it? Keep on like that, you're going to be another R.G. Lee. Did you go down and do what the Lord told you to do? And Saul swelled out his chest there and said, Thou blessed of the Lord, I have done as the Lord commanded. You have, huh? Yes, Samuel, I have. Why, we prayed all night before we left, and the power of God came down there. We had a tremendous meeting. No, no visible results, but uh, who knows what God hath wrought, and who knows what God can do if we just are yielded to him and let our lives be a channel of blessing. We have faith to believe that it is one of the greatest meetings that we ever had. And the old prophet said, Did you do what the Lord told you to do all the way, Saul? I have done it every jot and tittle. And Samuel said, Then what's that racket? And Saul said, What racket? Are you deaf? You mean to tell me you don't hear that? Sound like the Chicago stockyards. And for the first time, old Saul stopped and listened to someone's voice beside his own for the first time in about ten years. And way back behind that column, he heard it. Saul said to himself, Oh, good gravy. Oh, good gravy. The cat's out of the bag now. Samuel read his mind and said, Yeah, that's right. The cat's out of the bag. And I'll tell you something else. You better have not try to stuff him back in again. Only make matters that much worse. Now, you listen to me. There was a time when you didn't put on all these fancy hair, Saul. There was a time when you were a little man in your own sight. You remember that day up there on that rooftop when I poured that oil on your head? You're just a country boy then. You feared God. You believe the book. Well, what do you turn it into anyway? Well, 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 well Samuel, the, 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 the people spared the cows and the, all that because they, they, they want to do sacrifice to the Lord. But that's why they did it. I mean, they had the, the, 